I want you to tell me from a pastor's perspective, what did you find most striking about the pilgrim's faith? Well, it's uh, embodied in the life of one man, John Robinson. He was the pastor of these pilgrims. Mm. Uh, he uh, formed them. He taught them. He was a man who loved them. He knew all of the people in this congregation. They came out of England. They were separatists. They were in Leiden. And there he, uh, he taught them and trained them yes. on the principles of freedom, the principles of faith and family. And, and when he said goodbye to about half his congregation and they came to the New World, came mm -hmm. to Plymouth, uh, he was depositing his very soul, the seed that he had sown in their lives, he had deposited in those people. Right. It, it's amazing. Just He's become a hero of mine, uh, this is Pastor John Robinson. And he, he had such a, I mean, we talked about this earlier, that he had such a, an intellect, mm -hmm. but an intellect that was uh, eclipsed only by the size of his heart. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing that's the most striking to me. I didn't anticipate just how sharp, how, how smart these guys were. Brilliant. He was, uh, he, he, he was, would appear at the University of Leiden, he would uh, debate, and he would win the day very often, just so articulate. And he knew the Word of God. He, he, he was founded in Scripture. And his heart was full of faith, and he had such a love for his people, and he instilled that love just to, to gather people, like Dr. Martin Luther King did, just gathering people, rallying them together for a right. common cause. Right. And he sent his people to the new world and said, look, armed with your faith and the truth of the word of God, if you can have freedom, then you can build a great society. You can build a great nation. And that's what they did. Armed with freedom, faith, and the truth of the word of God, they came to carve out of this wilderness a great nation. You know, I... Did, did you know all this before no. we went I, to Plymouth? I, I mean, I, that's how I think you're saying these things. And I say, wait a minute, are we talking about the same nation's well, history? Well, this two and a half year journey that you've been on, and I, I, I've watched you, and, and we've talked together and gone back and forth. I've watched you study. I've watched you develop and, and develop an appreciation for our foundation. I, I feel like but, a dry sponge when mm -hmm. I learn these things. Me too. And 1620, August of 1620, he... He read and had a, had a speech read, a farewell letter from Pastor John Robinson to those people going aboard the Mayflower. And he just one last time said, look, don't take offense to anyone, love each other, and look, there, be open to the word of God, and you go out there and carve out a new land. And about half the people had to stay behind, but right. he sent women and children and their husbands, families, right out of the, the belly of their church over to this new land. It was amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. amazing. Well, we're going to, we're four minutes away from starting the film, and I want you to meet one more friend. This is my good friend, Warren Barfield. And Warren and I, give it up for Warren Barfield, everybody. All the way from Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, Warren and I have worked together on a film called Fireproof. And Warren wrote and sang the theme song, Love Is Not a Fight. And we do marriage events around the country, uh, strengthening people's marriages, called uh, Love Worth Fighting For. And last month, Warren, you sang a song that I absolutely loved. It was a new song. I had not heard it before. And uh, I, I want you to sing that song before we start the film. You asked me to tell a story, although you've heard the story. I, I wrote the song. I met my wife, Megan, when I was traveling around the country, singing about every gig I could book. And uh, I thought she was the one. And I came home and told my mom about her. But I told my mom I had to wait until I had, you know, figured life out, until I was secure before I could ask Megan to marry me because I figured she didn't want to live in my car with me. And my mom said, she said, son, in life, if you wait until you're secure, if you wait until you've figured everything out before you do anything, you'll never do anything. So I asked Megan to marry me, and we've been married for a little over 10 years. Never had to live out of my car so far. And the lesson I learned was right now is the right time. Quit putting off what can be done right now. I was sitting in the kitchen, my mama doing dishes. I was thinking out loud that she was just listening by the new girl in my world. I loved her, but that's really all I had to offer, except a little ring. And mama said, son, you can't pass up a good thing if you're waiting for the right time. Right time will fly right by 
Always planning, never moving. Always praying, never doing. It ain't living if you're just spending your life waiting for the right time. With my ring on her finger, we were barely getting by on a dream and a prayer. A few things, small things, no space in our lives for a little one. So when we got the news, it was like God saying, I knew better than to wait on you. <laughs> if you're waiting for the right time, the right time. Fly right by, always planning, never moving, always praying, never doing. It ain't living if you're just spending your life waiting for the right time. Yeah, you gotta be careful how long you wait. Cause one more day could be. Too late. It could be too late. So if you're waiting for the right time, the right time that will fly right by you. Always planning, but never moving. Always praying, and never doing. It ain't living if you're just spending your life waiting for the right time. Waiting for the right time. Oh, right now is the right time. Oh, right now could be your right time. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah! <laughs> I love traveling around the country with this guy. Um, all right, everybody, it's time. No more waiting. Two and a half years of planning and two and a half years of working hard and all of your prayers and all of your support and standing with me leading up to Monumental, it's all come down to right now. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present to you Monumental.